Hey there guys, welcome back, hope you're all doing well, this is Chetan here from DoubleCube and welcome back to a brand new tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be learning to create a eSports style text or you know a team text, a you know your gaming team text, uh, you know things like that. Uh, I'm not going to be showing you how to make a mascot logo in this. It's going to be more of the text style. And the money of the gaming teams or esports team, they have only the text and they don't have a mascot. Uh, so it's not necessary to have a mascot anyway. So before we start with the tutorial, I want to mention that I am on Instagram now. So if, so if you guys want to follow me, please do go ahead and follow me. Uh, it would mean so much to me. I'm going to be uploading all my daily, uh, you know, works over there, so you guys can you know check out all of them. Uh, you can you know give me your feedback and you know uh, whatever it is uh, I'm available to talk to you guys if you have any questions or requests always available so uh, let's get on to the tutorial guys all right so I'm gonna so here I am in illustrator I'm gonna do is go to file and click on new and uh, for for usually my eSports stuff I choose 1920 by 1080 as the dimensions all right uh, the color mode you can set it to CY, CMYK uh, it actually doesn't matter um, go ahead and click on ok and we're gonna get a huge big canvas and uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go create a black layer so I'm gonna go and just set the stroke to nothing and this I wanna set it to black maybe not a complete black a little bit less black so almost black and I'm gonna go click on this rectangular tool and I'm gonna go create a box alright and that's what we have um, and now if you want to get those snappy things on as you can see right here all you have to do is click on window uh, view and click on smart guys and snap to point and that should do all right so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and click on this button over here which is going to lock it so i can't make any changes so if i have to make something on my own i need to go and click on this and this is going to create a new layer so with the new layer, I'm going to go and get my text tool, as you can see over here, and I'm going to type in, and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to type, but I'm going to type in, let's say, uh, custom custom text. I have no idea. So, and then I'm going to go and uh, scale this up, hold down Shift, Control, and Alt, and that's going to scale it out evenly. And I'm going to go ahead and place it in the center. I'm going to obviously going to choose a different font because this sucks to the core. Uh, let's try something, something cool and simple. Yeah, uh, I think Moon Channel looks good. Uh, maybe a little thicker font because we're going to be adding a little bit of stroke and things like that. Okay, so I'm going with Evogria. It's a pretty common font that everybody uses. Um, right, so once we have this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go and uh, select the text layer again. Uh, select all the letters. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this color to a different color. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to white for now. I'm going to change it later. All right. So I have this custom text every day. And uh, to give a little bit more effect, what I'm going to do is uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and just put custom. And uh, actually, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and just type in eSport. That should do better. And then I'm going to go select all the four letters that we have over here. And I'm going to go ahead and just bring down the size of this. So, you know, it kind of looks like this you know looking more better and then I want to move this up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the character panel over here and I want to click on this set the baseline shift and just increase that up so it kind of sits in the center of both the text you see something like that that's looking that's looking so good guys all right and then I'm gonna go and just hold down shift control and alt and scale it up pretty big so you have something it's pretty big all right and now we're going to go ahead and click on object and choose expand. Now what expand is going to do is it's going to make sure that you can't edit your text anymore. So you want to make sure that your lettering, your font, text, letter, everything is perfect before you can go ahead and uh, you know edit it. So, so for me this is perfect now and I'm going to go click on OK and now it's going to create individual, I can select individually all these letters and do whatever I want. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to, go to object transform and uh, let's see oops sorry we want to go to object not quite sure type view effect uh, yeah distort and you want to choose free distort and that's going to bring up this distortion box now what you can do is you can distort your text any way you want it to uh, literally any way so I can go ahead and move this like so I mean okay I'm going to click on reset you know whatever it is you can move it like that you can move it like this you know make it look crazy for now I'm gonna go ahead and just 
move this slightly inside like so, giving it a kind of a bird's eye view effect. I don't click on OK, it's gonna give me something like this, right? Uh, so now as you can see over here, the letters are actually straight, the path is actually straight, but the letters are actually, you know, giving a different view. And that's gonna create a lot of problems if you wanna distort it further. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to Object and choose Expand Appearance, and that's gonna expand the path to the look of, it's gonna expand it to the appearance of the text that we have over here, right? That's looking much better. Now let's go and go to uh, object, uh, yeah, effect, warp, and I'm gonna choose arc lower, and I'm gonna go okay, bring this arc, this options over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and set it to horizontal, it's horizontal selected, oops, horizontal, and uh, we wanna go ahead and just reduce down the bend to a negative side, so you see, so you kind of see what kind of effect we're getting, so you wanna bring it up pretty much as much as we can, like so. And then probably 12, maybe 10. I'll click on OK, and I'm gonna go to go to Object and choose Expand Appearance again. And now we're gonna have a look like this. Once we have this, we're gonna go go to Effect. Uh, I'm sorry, where is that? Uh, warp. And you wanna choose Arc Upper now this time. And this time you don't wanna give it such a big uh, dip. So maybe we can set it to probably just five or maybe four. I'm not quite sure and uh, click on OK and we're gonna go to object and choose expand appearance again and uh, wow this is looking so good so now we can go ahead and color up this cool dude so usually mascot uh, logos they have two layers of color uh, which give them the cool look um, so let me just show you how, how I do that so let's just go ahead and increase it a little bit more okay and now with this text selected I'm gonna go to object path and click on offset path. Now, if I click on preview, you see it kind of offsets the entire text that we have over here. But before we do that, we wanna go and choose Control C and Control F. What that does, it's gonna copy it and paste it exactly on the text. So if I move this up, you see we have two copies. That's cool, that's cool. And now on the top one, I'm gonna go to object, path, offset path, and I'm gonna click on preview and that's gonna give us this extra bevel. But I want it to be on the inside. So I'm gonna go and choose the offset to minus 10. And we see we have this nice inner bevel. And we'll click on OK. And now we have two paths. One is this, and the other one is the outer path. You guys might not see the difference, but let me just show you the difference. All right, so if I select this one, and I'm gonna come over here and click on this gradient tool, and that's gonna drop in a gradient. Now, as you can see, it's dropping a gradient on each of the letters separately and if I set the angle to 90 degrees uh, well actually it doesn't matter now because everything is you know that's, cool. that's fine so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the colors so uh, I'm gonna go set the last one to a white color so you select the stop double click on the fill and choose a color of your choice excuse me that's gonna be white and we're gonna select this one and uh, we're going to choose a light grayish color, so probably something like that. And then set this to 90 again and click on OK. Now, as you can see, it's applied on the entire thing, but we don't want it to do that. So I'm going to select right click and choose ungroup. And then I'm going to go ahead and just select the outer one and hit delete. As you can see, I don't know if you can see, but you can see the difference. So I'm going to go do that for all the layers. Just select all the outer layers and hit delete and it's good. Now we can select all the inner layers, the, the bottom layers, the fat or thicker layers. And I'm going to select the same effect right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to minus 90 this time. And that's going to reverse the effect, right? I'm going to click on, just, just click away. And as you can see, we have this beautiful looking gradient shift color difference kind of a thing looks so now we can go ahead and actually I'm gonna select oops sorry let's select all of these layers the the inner ones and I'm gonna go ahead and probably set this to a little darker color so select this one select this top and maybe a little darker color I don't want to be too dark a little bit dark let's see somewhere around here click on OK uh, and let's set this to 90 click OK and uh, that's looking good then let's do that for the bottom ones 
Oh, it's only selected and just. Oh, oh, damn it. Let's control Z that. Like this, then press I. You can select the eyedropper tool, just click on the gradient, it automatically gets the gradient. Set this to minus 90 and click away, and uh, that should look much better. This looks way better, much better now. All right, so now let's make it look more cool. So I'm gonna select the outside layer. I'm gonna go to object, I'm gonna choose path, and I'm gonna choose offset path again. This time, I'm gonna go set this to 20 on the plus, or maybe even 30. Again, it depends on the kind of font you're choosing, right? Maybe I'm gonna set with 25 now, and then I'll click on OK. And then I'm gonna go come here to the Pathfinder tool and just click on this button which says Unite and that creates the entire thing into one single shape. And I'm gonna click on this color and I'm gonna set this to a pure black. Click OK. And I'm gonna go select right click and choose Arrange and choose Send to Back. As you can see, this is how it looks like. It looks really good. It looks so cool and insane. Only thing we can do is we can finish it off uh, by making it more better by selecting the path, so we're gonna go right click and choose ungroup, and then with all these layers selected, I'm gonna press uh, P on my keyboard and the minus button, which is gonna get me the pen tool and the minus key, and I can just go ahead and just start clicking on all these points, and uh, you know, that's gonna get rid of the entire thing. But that's gonna take time, so the other alternative is to, put this thing back on, uh, get the, the rectangle tool or get the pen tool itself, and just start making uh, you know all the all the you know cover covering up all those edges that you don't want so let's let's see uh, let's come over here all right and we can come right over here and just let's 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 grab a nice curve so it kind of matches the whole thing all right and then just click on this and you can come over here Hold down shift to get a straight line, which I'm going out of the box. Then click on this, oops, control zero to center, and then we can go press control so we can right click and choose arrange and choose center back. And then we have something that looks like this, so everything is beautifully covered up. And we can actually go ahead and move this. So if you want to move any points, you want to select and choose press A on the keyboard, or you can come over and choose the direct selection tool to select the point. Which, whatever point you want and you just want to move it up however you want it to and uh, that should look that should look really good you can actually go ahead and select this one we can add a point in the center like in the dead center uh, yeah and then we can just select the point and we can bring it down like so we can click on here which is going to convert it into a smooth anchor point so we get the nice curve as you can see right over there Let's go ahead and just increase this. Yeah, that looks way better, way better now. And then we can select all, both, the, both the black ones, and then we can click on this and choose Unite, and that's gonna give us a single black object. Looking good. Yeah. Now, another thing you wanna do is, I mean, that's completely up to you, but it's obviously an addition. So we can go and select the rectangle tool. Let's just create a small rectangle, not too big, right? I think uh, something like this should suffice. And uh, as you can see, we want it to be right in the center. So it's gonna be in the center. And then you can uh, select uh, these anchor points. So press A on your keyboard and you can select this. Hold down shift and move the arrow keys. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five. The same thing over here, hold down shift and do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, maybe 6, 7, and the same on the other side, 6, 7, equal distances. Select both of these, come on over here and just select this to unite. And now that's gonna make it make everything disappear, but the only reason is that we wanna send it to back. So we right click and choose arrange, send to back, and boom, there we go, there we have it. So now once we have this text, let's go and click on this, go to object, uh, path, uh, offset path and let's do a 25 offset again maybe this time I set it to 30 and then click on OK and this time I want to change it to a different color so let's just go get a dashing red cool looking color so probably something like that and 
Wow, don't you guys like the look of it? It looks crazy. Maybe we can go make it a little more darker color, so let's just try that and see how it looks. Wow, this looks cool. Now we can go ahead and add in our own text over here, so I'm just gonna go type in eSports, I, I don't know, team, not quite sure. Uh, we can use the same font, let's go and set this to any color actually. Uh, then let's go and click on the gradient tool, let's add in a gradient for this. Oh, we have to go and edit, so let's go and choose expand. And now we're talking, let's click on this, and let's choose a nice red, uh, you know, gradient. So with that set to 90 of the angle, let's select the white one. We're gonna choose a, okay, let's select this and let me click on this. Let's choose a nice uh, light red. So I would say probably something like this. Uh, and then for dark one, we can choose probably a dark one. So this to 90. Yeah. And I would say we will go make this a little bit more darker. So click on okay. And we have ourselves a cool, t cool text. Let's just bring this down, shrink it up, so it kind of sits right in the center. All right, let's just bring it down. You can go ahead and add it in effects if you want. So let me just do that real quick. I'm gonna go to effect. I'm gonna go to warp. Uh, not actually warp. I'm gonna go and choose the the transform free distort, and we'll just slowly inside, not too much. Click on OK. And uh, yeah, there we go. That's looking way better. And uh, there we go. Now, if you want to export it, all you got to do is make sure that you don't have the background layer selected. So you can hide the background layer. You can go press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, S, and that's going to give us the save for web format. Format you want to choose PNG, JPG, whatever format you want. Just click on save, and uh, you are good to go. So, uh, that is pretty much it for this tutorial guys, thank you guys so much for watching, hope you guys really enjoyed it, if you did, good, feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more content, if you have any questions or requests, feel free to mention them in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in my next video, so till then, take care, and bye bye.